we're going to go through the process of applying the chair back brace. It's one of the most common braces that you're going to see at the acute care facilities. Uh, there's two different styles of chair backs, but structurally they're the same. The brace has a superior and inferior band. We'll show you where these bands should be sitting on, on the body, as well as on each side are lateral stays. Okay, on the front we have either a hook closure or we have a Velcro closure. Regardless of the type of closure that's on the front, the idea behind the brace is simply to use hydrostatic pressure to contain the brace and use the frame of the brace as a rigid back, back giving us support for whatever section of the spine is being worked on. Normally this is a lumbosacral orthosis. If you notice, we want the superior band to be about an inch to an inch and a half below the inferior angle of the scapula. We want the, post, or the distal band, if we put your finger at the top of the coccyx, this should be at the top of the coccyx, this lower level should be about the mid buttocks. The reason for that is when the patient sits down, this should be approximately one inch off the chair. Now on either side, I said we had lateral stays. These lateral stays should fall if you take the trochanter midline on both sides. Okay. Now we have a gap here. And the reason for that is when we apply the bib, what's going to happen is the bib is going to bring, draw Eric's stomach in like this, forming a, a rigid cylinder around the spine. And we want some place for that back to go. And these posterior bars have to go along the paraspinals so that we're not catching the spinous process. So we want these posterior bars to go along the paraspinals. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to explain the straps. Okay. And the bib. Okay, now we're looking at the brace as it should be applied. Now, the key with applying the bib is we want to keep the bottom of this bib as low on the abdomen as we possibly can, okay? And that's because we want to draw the tummy up with the bottom of this. Don't fall into the mistake of applying the bottom of the brace at, say, the level of the navel. Otherwise, it's going to ride up too high here, okay? You'll notice that these buckles go in opposite directions and that's so that the patient can use the straps against themselves to tighten them up. Fairly easy. Now for, we're going to get Eric to do a pirouette here for us. Okay, now again you'll notice there's a bit of gapping here. This is critical because after surgery you're going to have dressings and it's going to be thicker here and we don't want to be applying any pressure to the incision sites, okay? Again, we're inferior to the scapula. We're about mid-butt, right at the coccyx. And we see the lateral stay falls along the midline, okay? And that's really uh, the basics to the chair back brace. So regardless of the type of brace you get, whether the Velcro closure or the hook closure, uh, the structure is always the same. Okay, so here we have the Velcro closure uh, chair back brace. Again, like I said before, the structure of the braces is the same and it has a corset front. The only difference is that these have Velcro closures and sometimes patients will feel more comfortable putting on a Velcro closure than they will the buckles. The buckles are stronger, the Velcro is easier. Again, if you can just turn for me Eric, mm -hmm. our stays are along the the lateral stays are along the midline. 
the superior bar is inferior to the scapula, and this is at the coccyx level. So identical to the other one, it's just the closures in the front are different. Now we've got Eric in what's called a Taylor brace. A Taylor brace is an extension brace. It's a thoracic lumbar orthosis, okay? There's a few differences between the Taylor and the chair back. The chair back is a lumbar extension brace. The Taylor is a thoracic lumbar extension brace, okay? Now the big difference we're gonna get, we get Eric to turn around. We've got posterior stays along the paraspinals. These uprights should come about mid-scapula, okay? The pelvic band is the same as the chair back. We want it at the top of the coccyx, about mid-butt. There are no lateral stays on the tailor because this is simply an extension brace. We're not controlling lateral movement, okay? Now, with the tailor brace, we have what's called, I'll get you to turn around for me, Eric. Yeah, either way. We have what's shoulder straps, and these shoulder straps simply help to keep the patient in extension. So you can see how the, the padding is to protect the arm. And there's clips that go over the shoulder and you snug them up, okay? You want this so that we're not getting the straps cutting in over here, okay? Again, same as on the chair back, this corset front is pulling Eric's body in towards the stays along the back. That gives us a rigid cylinder. These give us that extension we're looking for so that he's not going into a kyphotic curve. So we're not ending up with a thoracic curve. Okay? Again, we have the gapping at the back. This can be bent if you find that the gap is too much, but be careful because don't forget they're going to have dressings on. Okay? But the primary things are you want this to be between the trochanter and the iliac crest, you want this band to be in that space. Because we don't have any lateral stays, that's what you go by. This pelvic belt, turn around Eric, please, thank you. This pelvic belt is what secures the brace onto the pelvis. And it's just on a slider. And you snug it up fairly snug because you're not, you're not, you don't have to worry about the, the abdomen. You're getting onto the pelvis with this. So do it up fairly snugly. And again, you want this as low as you can on the abdomen so that we're pulling up under the tummy. It, particularly if you've got somebody that does have a bit of a tummy. If they're pendulous, we want to draw this up so we're supporting like so. Okay? So the brace that we're looking at right now is called a clamshell. It's for unstable spinal fractures, and they can range anywhere from about T6 all the way down to the lumbar region. Uh, there are two sections to this brace. There's a posterior panel and an anterior panel that Eric's holding, okay? We're gonna take a look at the posterior panel. Oh, I'm gonna get Eric to turn around. The posterior panel is fairly simple. The posterior panel, again, you want it this at about the level of the coccyx, and this should be about mid scapula. Okay. Now the front panel, I'll just scooch down here. Again, you want to get underneath the abdomen, okay? The key is to lift up again with this brace. Okay, and when you get the front and the back panel, this squeezes. So this gives you the most restriction out of any of the braces we've looked at. Uh, the, the chair back, the tailor, and this is the clamshell. This is the ultimate. And this is usually for unstable fractures. Okay, if I can just get you to hold that, Eric. Yeah. 
Now, in conjunction with the uh, anterior portion, we have what's called a sternal pad. What this does is it holds the back into extension, but we have greater control because we're going further up on the chest, okay? So we don't want to catch the sternal notch. You want to make sure that you don't get this kind of a thing going on. When you're applying it, apply it down here. On the upper part of the pecs, that feels good. on the sternum, okay? And this goes into a slider, okay? This slider is, these are all Phillips screws. So you have to undo a couple of the screws and then this just flips, flips up. You'll lay this on the patient. We will most likely do this when we come in to do the call. The measurements you need for this. We want a hip measurement at the level of the trochanter. We want a waist measurement at the level of the navel. And we want a chest measurement at the nipple line, okay? Now, if it's a female patient, we have to know, do they have a bust, what, what's their bust size, okay? Uh, but obviously, for, for a male, you don't have that same consideration. Also, you want this border of the anterior piece to be low enough so that it's not digging into the breast tissue. And are those measurements circumferential or diameter? Uh, circumferential. Okay. We need circumferential measurements. 